Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the science fiction and action movie titled, Moonfall. Spoilers ahead. Astronauts Brian, Joss Cinda, and Marcus are in the midst of repairing a satellite in 2011 when suddenly their instruments start flickering and something unreal happens. A bizarre black swarm of objects attacks them. Joss Cinda is knocked unconscious and Marcus's space tether is torn. As Brian tries to save Marcus from floating away in space, his own tether is too short to get a hold of him. Brian then gets back to the ship and tries to contact Marcus via the radio, but the systems are down. While trying to find a way to get back to Earth, he sees the swarm creating a hole on the moon. He successfully lands the shuttle and is considered a hero. But after a one and a half year investigation, nobody believes Brian's extraordinary story, and since Jacinda was unconscious, she can't confirm it. NASA fires Brian, and the official story becomes that it was because of human error. Due to losing his home, his wife Brenda and son Sonny, move in with Brenda's mother. Ten years later, the conspiracy theorist KC Hausman is mopping the floor in a facility at University of California. As usual, he secretly sneaks in and uses a professor's computer to log into an observatory in Chile to get data on the moon's orbit. He requests to get it sent to his email instead of the professor's. KC then hurries to his other job at a fast food restaurant where he receives the data from the observatory, and sees that the moon's orbit has changed. Immediately he calls on the only public NASA phone number available, only to have the gift shop answer, who can't patch him through to higher levels. Meanwhile in Texas, Jacinda is awakened by a call and is summoned to work. She checks on her son and talks to his nanny Michelle before leaving. As she arrives at Johnson Space Center, she's informed the moon's orbit has veered, and that a satellite has detected something being emitted from a hole on its surface. Back in California, KC cannot get anyone on the phone that will listen to him. Suddenly, his cat Fuzz Aldrin pees on a newspaper, on which KC reads its astronaut day at the museum. He tells his cat he's a genius and then rushes away. Once at the museum, KC walks in on a group of school kids thinking KC is an astronaut that will hold a lecture for them, so he takes the opportunity to share his theories on how the moon is a hollow megastructure built by extraterrestrials. Brian, who is supposed to hold the lecture, is simultaneously awakened by his landlord at home, having overslept. Brian, who is behind in his rental payments, then jumps through a window and speeds away. As he gets to the museum, he meets KC who starts telling him about the moon being out of orbit. But Brian is reluctant to listen and thinks he's crazy. Two security guards then start leading KC out, and as they do, he throws papers at Brian with the moon's orbital data, which Brian picks up and puts in the bin. That evening, Brenda calls Brian, telling him to turn on his TV. Apparently, Sonny has been involved in a high-speed chase with the police. A few days later, Brian attends Sonny's court case, messing it up by interjecting frequently and attempting to defend his son by lying. As a result, the judge decides to delay the trial and imprison Sonny until then. Later, Brian is on the phone arguing with Tom who is paying for the attorney and who is Brenda's new husband. However, Brenda intervenes and ends their discussion. At the same time, KC is visiting his mother in the nursing home and informs her that no one is paying attention to him. She then advises him he should make them listen, before forgetting who he is, due to memory difficulty. Meanwhile, Jacinda is briefing Deputy Director Albert Hutchings of NASA on the most recent findings. Because the moon has moved into an elliptical orbit, city-sized moon debris will start impacting Earth in approximately three weeks. Jacinda also suggests doing a mission to investigate the hole on the moon's surface, but they lack the resources. At that same instant, an anonymous source leaks the information to the internet. In the courthouse, Brian tries to bribe the judge and get his son released, but the judge ignores him since he needs to get out of the city fast due to what is being broadcast on the news. Brian, who hasn't seen the news, suddenly sees Albert on the TV holding a press conference, saying that a lunar expedition is being deployed and that there is no need to be alarmed. Tom tells Brenda he wants to leave the city and go to Colorado. She however, doesn't want to leave Sonny in jail, but Tom assures her that his lawyer will get him released so that he can get to them. Rioting, looting, and mass migration becomes widespread. In a joint effort, NASA and ESA eventually send out a rocket to look into the anomalies. Live broadcasts cover everything from official statements to even conspiracies about megastructures. As Brian hears this, he gets to the dumpsters at the museum to retrieve KC's papers that he threw away, getting help from a policeman to find them. Brian then visits KC's website where he discovers that KC will hold an urgent meeting shortly. When the NASA shuttle reaches the moon, they sends a probe into the hole. The probe slowly descends down to 24 kilometers, but abruptly stops and starts to ascend back up quickly again. 
At the same time, NASA sees that the moon temporarily starts returning to its original orbit. Suddenly, the big black swarm exits the hole and attacks the shuttle, killing the astronauts on board. When Brian arrives at KC's hotel conference, he sees that the people listening to him can't distinguish fact from fiction. In order to hear how KC was aware of this before NASA, Brian takes him outside to talk alone. KC has spent years researching faraway planets in search of alien megastructures, and was shocked to learn our own moon was one. He explains that megastructures are solid shells surrounding a power core, like a white dwarf. For the moon to have changed its orbit, something has had to happen to the core inside it. As the moon gets closer to Earth, extreme tides start occurring. The town starts to flood and Brian orders everyone from KC's seminar to get upstairs for safety, but KC is too slow and gets hit by the water as it enters the room. Since he can't swim, Brian has to jump in and save him. After reviewing the mission footage, Jacinda and Albert conclude that the swarm exhibits traits indicating intelligence and must be an AI. Albert resigns since he's not prepared to handle this, and Jacinda is appointed as the new deputy director. Albert hands her his clearance so she can read up on NASA's confidential history. When Jacinda visits NASA's limited area, she discovers a video from her previous mission, which shows the swarm attacking them, just like Brian had told them. Suddenly, a former NASA officer called Holdenfield appears, who provides more answers. According to the official account, the renowned Apollo 11 lost contact with mission control for two minutes in 1969 when it touched down on the moon. In reality, mission control turned off the feed so that no one would find out what was discovered on the moon that day. NASA chose to conceal the unusual pulsating lights coming from the moon's surface, since the technology was light years ahead of their own. They didn't know if they would be able to defend themselves against it. A military initiative, Zulu X-Ray 7, was the only chance they had but was discontinued due to financial causes. In a meeting with the military, Jacinda tells them that destroying the Black Swarm probably makes the moon return to its original orbit, to which they respond they already have a plan and dismisses her. She tells General Doug Davidson, her ex-husband, that everyone will die of global fallout if they launch nukes, but he just tells her that they will execute their own plan. When he asks her and Jimmy to meet him in Colorado, she refuses to step down from responsibility in the crisis. Even if it isn't complete, she wants Doug to bring her the Zulu X-Ray 7, which is an EMP and presumably their only chance. She can only get Doug to agree once she says yes to join him after the launch. Later that evening, a military chopper arrives to pick up Brian, who only agrees to go if KC also follows. As they meet Jacinda, KC reveals he was the one who leaked the information, after which Jacinda informs them about what they know so far. She is seeking out Brian since he is the only astronaut to have ever successfully landed a shuttle without power, and because this AI swarm can recognize Earth's technology, they need him. Brian agrees provided his son is released from custody and brought to the station for protection, a deal they accept. The team then retrieves an old shuttle from a museum to send the EMP to the moon. As the moon gets closer, it starts causing eruptions and earthquakes around the world, which it shouldn't, no matter how close it is. This only reinforces KC's megastructure theory. Doug and the military arrive with the EMP and explain to Brian how to detonate it. Brian clarifies how their mission will be carried out, a navigator will make sure they get to the hole in the moon, and another will carry out calculations by hand since they can't use electricity. Suddenly, an earthquake occurs and one of the engines on the shuttle is damaged. Since they no longer can launch, Jacinda expresses her gratitude for everybody's efforts before ordering them to go and enjoy their last moments with their loved ones. When Jacinda is prepared to depart the base like the rest, she sees KC still working on computations. KC explains they can use the moon's gravitational pull to launch, which will make up for the broken engine. However, they need to launch at the exact moment the moon is directly above Earth since that's when gravity will be over 80% of the Earth's pull. They put together a last-minute squad to pull this off because most people have already left. Brian will fly, Jacinda will navigate, and KC will perform the computations. Jacinda and Brian bid their sons farewell before they leave with Michelle to meet Doug, and KC calls his mother. Just in case, Sonny receives a gun from Brian. They board the vessel, and as they prepare to launch, a massive gravity wave strikes the base. They have no time to wait, so Brian starts the engines before the countdown is finished. They make it out just in time before the water hits the shuttle, and they successfully manage to get into space with the help of the moon's pull. They refuel at a satellite as KC takes selfies. Since the moon is getting closer, they hurry up and switch off all electronics. In order to propel the shuttle toward the moon, Brian then manually engages the thrusters. To minimize the damage of debris, they turn the heat shields towards the moon. 
Back on Earth, a group of armed guys simultaneously halt Michelle and the boys in the middle of the road to steal their Jeep. Sonny manages to keep his gun, but Jimmy's bag is taken, which contains a special phone they needed to call Doug when arriving at his military bunker. Luckily, they are close to Tom's home, so Sonny takes them there to ask for a car. As they are walking, the squad must hide in a frail cabin until the moon passes because moon debris is beginning to drop on Earth, and the gravity starts pulling things. When the shuttle is almost at the moon's surface, Brian departs in a rover containing the EMP. He turns its electronics on to lure the AI swarm to get to it and returns to the shuttle. Once back, he activates the EMP to detonate it. The AI swarm appears, but something is wrong since it attacks their ship rather than the rover. Brian smashes the EMP's remote control because he thinks it might be attracting the swarm's attention, but the swarm continues and starts to engulf the shuttle. As they remember KC's phone is on, Brian smashes the phone to pieces too, after which the swarm returns back into the moon immediately. Since it didn't go for the rover, they then realize it isn't just seeking electronics, but biological creatures in an electronic environment. To avoid the military start launching nukes, which they will do in two hours, they now have to go down into the moon to stop it. Meanwhile, after the moon has passed, Michelle and the lads get out of their hiding place. Soon after, they arrive where Tom's house is, but since it's in a neighborhood that's behind walls, they are shot at by armed neighbors protecting their properties. Tom hears them and comes out driving a car. Just as Sonny reunites with his mother, they receive an evacuation message, telling them that the moon will cause atmosphere dissipation and make it difficult to breathe next time it passes by. They decide to stop by the fire station, where they take a few oxygen tanks. Suddenly, the men that stole their jeep appear and try to rob the tanks from them. Sonny thinks quickly and threatens them using his gun so that Tom and him can escape out to their car. Back at the moon, the trio recover the EMP and then enter the hole on the surface. Just like KC theorizes, the moon is in fact a hollow megastructure surrounding a white dwarf. As the three prepare to attack it with the EMP, the shuttle starts to navigate on its own, steering away from it. The swarm is fast and catches up with them, and is almost about to crush them when suddenly a door opens and a light sucks the shuttle inside a hangar. The shuttle is wrecked, and they all pass out due to lack of oxygen. Right after, the shuttle door opens and the trio is scanned by the light. At the same time, the military has been approved by the president to launch their nuclear weapons, and they begin a countdown. The bandits find Sonny and the others and start shooting at them. Tom retaliates while Sonny tries to steer the car clear of the plummeting debris. As they are driving, a huge rift appears in the ground ahead of them, and Sonny manages to jump the car over it. The robbers however, fail the jump and fall down into it. Doug then calls, informing Sonny and the others that he can no longer get them inside the bunker due to the nuke launch, and that they must take cover somewhere else. Suddenly, birds fall from the sky as the oxygen starts diminishing, and they end the call to put on oxygen masks. Jacinda and Casey wake up on the moon realizing that there's gravity and they can breathe. But Brian is not there, so they get out to take a look around and immediately see a door opening up. Despite Casey being skeptical, they enter since Jacinda explains it's like there are two intelligent entities fighting each other, and one trying to help them. Brian awakens in an infinite white room, where he sees his son Sonny. Apparently, the moon's internal system is communicating with him in the form of his memories of his son, to explain what is happening. Several billion years ago, humanity had forefathers who lived contentedly with technology that Earth can only begin to imagine. One day however, everything changed as an AI they built became conscious and turned against them morphing into unstoppable swarms of nanotechnology. The predecessors fled in spacecrafts like the moon, with the purpose of finding a new home in order to prevent extinction. But since the swarms hunted down all biological life, they sacrificed themselves, letting the moon find a new place on its own, carrying only DNA of life so that life and humans could be reborn one day. Brian is then told to lead the swarm away from the moon and destroy it since it can't do that itself. Jacinda and Casey spot him just as the moon is finished communicating with him. Brian informs them what he was told and they rush back to the lander. As they return to the hangar, they discover that the moon has repaired and upgraded their ship, as well as the EMP, which now is more powerful. Jacinda tells them it's 10 minutes left until the nukes are launched, but Brian has a plan. Meanwhile on Earth, Tom's daughter has run out of oxygen, so he gives her his own oxygen tank and tells her to not look back and continue, and as she does, Tom collapses and dies behind her. His daughter makes it to the others, who see Tom is not with her anymore. At the same time, Oxygen returns to the air and Sonny quickly decides to go look for Tom while the others enter a tunnel. But because moon debris impacts close to them and Sonny flies through the air, Michelle runs to his aid. Sonny ends up stuck underneath a tree trunk, 
and Michelle helps to move it as the moon's gravity helps them. The two then run back to the tunnel just in time before being crushed by debris. Meanwhile, the military is about to launch the nuclear bomb since cities all across the world are being destroyed. But Doug refuses to turn his nuclear launch key since he believes his ex-wife Jacinda can save them. Immediately after, the bunker is crushed and kills everyone. Brian performs a number of challenging maneuvers while the moon tries to help them escape the swarm by shooting at it. Brian steers inside the tunnel to the moon's surface and commands KC to prepare the EMP in the rover. His plan is to remain behind in the rover with the EMP while his friends flee in the shuttle, since the swarm needs biological life in an electrical environment to attack it. Jacinda becomes upset and disputes Brian's strategy. Suddenly, KC locks himself inside the rover with the EMP, and disconnects the rover from the rest of the lander, sacrificing himself. As he bids them farewell, he asks them to check on his mom, and confesses he's not a real doctor. In his final moments, Brian calls him Dr. Houseman out of respect and tells him to go and save the world. As the swarm engulfs the rover and is about to destroy it, KC detonates the EMP. The moon starts returning to its original orbit as the swarm is now gone, and the conditions on Earth returns to normal. Jacinda manages to safely land the ship, and they see the Chrysler building ruined beside them. The two promise each other to move in together again. They are rescued by a helicopter, which takes them to Sunny and the others. In the final scene, KC wakes up inside the moon and sees Fuzz Aldrin and his mother, who tells him that a copy was taken of his consciousness before he died, and that he now is part of the moon. He is amazed, and the AI tells him they should get started, to which KC asks, get started with what? The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.